Just call me life's biggest questions because we're getting philosophical today. Bendy and the Ink Machine is a first person puzzle action horror game that begins in the far days past of animation and ends in a very dark future. You play as Henry as he revisits the demons of his past by exploring the abandoned animators workshop of Joey Drew Studios. With twists and turns at every corner, solve the riddle, escape the workshop, and above all, fear the machine and survive. But what if this machine and this game was real? That's what we're exploring today. Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. I'm Connor Monroe and this is what if Bendy and the Ink Machine was real? Let's do it. To answer this question, we first need to ask a question. What is the Ink Machine? The Ink Machine was installed by the cartoon studio's owner Joey Drew and the Ghent Company to create living entities for the animation company. Wally Franks was the only person allowed to be the attendant to this machine. It's also the main plot device that's triggering many of the events because of the ink that flows through the machine. Basically, it's a giant machine that uses ink and human souls to make living versions of the Joey Drew Studios characters. But it didn't actually start out like this. Originally, the ink machine functioned like a 3D printer of sorts, where sketches would turn into real three-dimensional models and figures. However, somehow the machine gets enchanted or corrupted in some way, and changes to allow these cartoons to create living versions. These characters also have multiple variations, with some characters being made out of only ink, and others being infused with human souls. When infused with the soul, however, the ink machine may get a paper jam in a sense. Basically, those pure of heart, or those that have a genuine love for the characters, would turn into the perfect version of the character they most relate to, while those with impure intentions or any corrupt individuals would turn into evil versions of those characters. Basically, the ink machine acted as your partner's father that you're meeting for the first time, asking you what your intentions are, then judging you based on your answer. The evil versions of these characters, like Bendy and Alice Angel, turned into the antagonists of the game, though, whereas the perfect versions, like Mecha Boris and Perfect Alice, turned into our allies, even if they were made completely out of ink. Now, without getting too deep into the story or lore of the games, what if this machine was real? How much damage would it cause? Unfortunately, there would probably be a lot of human sacrifice in this story, just because, well, that's kind of how these things go. The character would probably end up having a human soul. There would also need to be someone who was actively sacrificing these people to the machine, either in an effort to make an army or to promote their characters even more. And you know exactly who I'm thinking would do that? <laughs> oh hell yeah, it's Disney. Disney is just the kind of company that would sacrifice humans to an ink machine in an effort to promote or market themselves even more. The idea that they could fill their parks with actual living versions of their characters would be impossible for them to pass up. And honestly, I'd see why. Being the first place to have real versions of cartoon characters so many people grew up with would solidify their growing monopoly, and would in essence make them the world's biggest superpower more than they already are. Nobody would be talking about Jeff Bezos and his freaking Dr. Evil style rocket, or the guy that paid $28 million to be on said rocket and then called in saying that he was busy that day. Like, nobody would care. We would be in awe of Disney and their real characters. As a kid, we think the characters we meet when we go to the parks are the real ones, but as we grow older, we grow out of that illusion. But this would suck even adults back to meet the real characters. People who as kids grew up watching Peter Pan meet the real flying Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. <laughs> Tinkerbell. <laughs> Anyway, the ability to create these characters in real life is something that Disney would not pass up. The question is, how would they get the souls? They could just force the characters who already wear the suits into the machine, but this could result in evil versions of the characters, like an evil melting Cinderella, and that wouldn't be good for kids. So the best bet would probably be to have some form of a job opening, where you'd apply and then be given a questionnaire to fill out, followed by an interview, same with any other job. Job, except instead they're turning you into a cartoon character instead of destroying your dreams. Well, I mean, I guess maybe it would be the same thing. Now, not everyone would obviously make the cut, but the issue still remains. What about the bad apples? Obviously, everyone is on their best behavior during an interview and even the first days or months of a job. So how can we tell the good nuts from those who would try to catch a squirrel from a chocolate factory? Well, time. If Disney wanted to minimize their chances of making an evil clone, at least if they knew about it, they would wait to see an employee's true colors before putting them through the machine. 
But then again, this is if they knew about the potential imperfections and if they knew what caused them, which is a big if, since we only have an idea about what causes it thanks to Matt Pat and his theories on the games, as well as Super Horror Bro. If it was real, Matt Pat wouldn't have made a theory about the games because they wouldn't exist, and neither would Super Horror Bro. So they wouldn't really know about the defects until they saw one. So if they didn't know and just started throwing their employees into the machine, how would they deal with the rejects? This is a moral dilemma and I honestly don't know how Disney would handle it. The simple solution is just to put a bullet between their eyes, but if that got out, Disney would have to deal with a lot more than just getting cancelled. Plus, I don't know if they'd want to spend the money on the bullets. They absolutely would not let these versions run around the park terrorizing the kids, but maybe they'd keep them around for Halloween Horror Nights. Does Disney do that or is it just Universal? or Six Flags or whatever. Like, this is why Canada is great, because we have Wonderland and that's basically it. I don't count Cedar Park, but if you know, you know. But even if they did let them out during Halloween only, we see Imperfect Alice and even Sammy actively try and kill us. So we have no idea what unhappy, imperfect Disney characters would do during Halloween, where everyone thinks that people are just having fun or putting on a show. You'd see Captain Hook stab someone in the eye and they'd all think that it's a, just a show. Unless they figured out that these characters were homicidal maniacs beforehand, they would have one bloody night and then get shut down for the rest of forever. The question is would they be liable for any lives taken or damages? It depends. If the court could prove that the ink machine was willingly used by Disney to create those monsters and then unleashed, then yes, they probably would be. But to prove that, the court would either need a willing subject to go through the machine, or they would have to try and make a pure ink monster which could yield poor results results, creating a searcher or even nothing. But a searcher could be enough to convince a jury. Then again, they could also just kill all the imperfect versions of the characters just because they weren't exactly what they wanted. And I mean, it's not like you can identify a cartoon character as a human, right? Maybe? I don't know, do they keep their fingerprints? Their dental records? I don't know. But digging up the body of an imperfect Ariel after the company announced that they were going to have real versions of their characters at their park would be a real PR disaster. And would probably come with a full blown investigation that would reveal what the hell they were doing and then boom. Actually this is kind of funny since the financial mistake that probably ruined Joey Drew Studios was probably Bendyland, which I'm sure would have featured real life versions of their most popular characters, and that might have been why he was testing the ink machine. But there we have it friends, what if Bendy and the ink machine was real? We would probably have a Disney nightmare on our hands that would shut down the company forever, much like Joey Drew Studios. And yes, I know that Joey Drew Studios was meant to represent Max Fleischer and not Walt Disney, but if this technology was real in our time, we know that Disney would have capitalized on it first, or at least have wiped out Fleischer's name from the records of having used it or invented it much like he did with Steamboat Willie. What do you think would happen if the ink machine was real, and who's your favorite Bendy character? Be sure you let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching, I have been and shower make on a row, and I'll see you in another video.